I was profoundly disconnected from financial success. I could do with so little that I didn't know how to reach for more. I was trying to constantly give CPR to a business that I, I didn't know how to resuscitate. How does an artist learn how to build that financial success? For me, it was manufacture a product. What was happening is I had, the shops that I had were, were doing custom work. Each custom job really came down to me, even though I had some helpers. The deadlines fell on me, this, that, and the other. And it wasn't until we started manufacturing products for the culinary industry that then I could build the tooling and then I could hire somebody to just sort of re-pour the molds and replenish. It's like a photographer having a negative. They set up the shot, they take it, and now they have that negative that they can print and keep selling. And they can send that to the print shop. They don't have to print it, worry about it. Develop of something that's repeatable as quickly as possible. What was your first manufactured product? Two hollyhock leaves for the culinary industry. They were press molds, and I took them to an international culinary convention that I was invited to just as happenstance. I took as many as we could carry, and they sold out in a minute. You know, I was like, oh, we got to do this. I'll do all the tooling. And eventually that led to I invented tooled and manufactured about 300 unique products for the culinary industry. It's not that they all sold, but I was trying again and again, and many did sell. And that allowed me to build the business and buy the, buy the building in Oak Park. So that's what, that's what happened. Uh, in the Kitty Bunker, I was introduced to the culinary industry. Then after having the shop in my house, I was selling products. We had the internet now. <laughs> that was a big help, by the way. That allowed me to build a cash flow that could sustain someone looking at me to loan a bank to loan money. I think that, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, I think is I might have been at at that point, 180 something. But I was making that right after college at my first business when I was earning, you know, $2 an hour, but I had a lot of hours. Eventually, I was able to move the business out of an apartment and into a multi-use building, it, still in Oak Park. And that's when the, build, the business began to thrive because I was no longer having to hide. What I found out looking back is that everywhere I was, I was behaving as an artist, but I was hiding as a businessman. Would you have in mind any business mistakes you made when you just began to manufacture pro products and kind of figure out your way into entrepreneurship? Mistakes that stand out for you? Yes, yes, yes. I think the biggest thing is, is that I made too many products that I couldn't market. That some people have an idea with one product for their business and they put all their energy into that. I had hundreds and it diluted my ability. It built a library of products. So we had a catalog because I was trying to decide what would hit, you know, what were the ones that worked. If I had been able to be more focused, I think that would have helped. But I loved making them. I loved the invention of it, the newness of it. I was geeking out on stuff. I'm like, oh, I'll build that. And it's actually where my skill sets became extremely professional. And I emphasize that word because it meant professional looking. Before I'd made molds and they had to be good, but now I'm selling the molds. So they're a finished product. They're all handmade. Now they really have, you know, the engravings and names. And so that took me to the next level in craftsmanship to have a product to sell. The mistake was not being able to know how to sell it. I knew zero about marketing. So do you think you had that entrepreneurial sparkle in you and it kind of flowed for you? You did a couple of mistakes, but you learned a little bit and it, and it went for you. Or you think you are more of an artist who had to struggle to, to become an entrepreneur? I think I was an entrepreneur first and an artist second, because even in art school, I was saying, if I make a mold of this sculpture, I can have someone else do the casting and I can move on to another sculpture because I don't have to keep remaking these things. So I always had that idea of scaling in mind and I wasn't making art very long at the beginning. I moved into selling my time for fabricating for other people. So I didn't call myself an artist for a long time, long time, definitely a business guy. Without business skills, art school gives you shit for business skills. Crap about negotiation. Art school, listen, you have failed tens and hundreds of thousands of students in the sense of taught them how to be an artist, but you haven't taught them how to survive living on art. It's, it's like, that's crap. I resent that to this point. Art school is not responsible for my success, but the amount of time I spent in a performance class, in a math class, in a language class that was not relevant to the betterment of the strength. I'm just like, all those resources could have been just 
tweaked and tuned. Why did I take physics in art school? Seriously? Seriously? That's what I resent. I resent the lack of sensible organization of curriculum that would in addition to developing artistic skills, concepts, that there would have been business tie-ins. Maybe it's different now, but man, they sucked hard on that. I would agree a lot with you that lack of lack of knowledge for artists, lack of education for artists on how to sell their art, how to how to establish their their, their business, how how to make money on art. It's not even how to make money off of a particular individual work of art. That would have been nice, karate chop. But it would have just been nice to say, how can I leverage the skill set that I use in making art into making it a living? And what can be expected? Man, I could talk a lot about that to art schools. I have friends who say their kids are going to art school. And because I'm not aware of what art schools are doing and I have an old memory of how it is, I'm just like, don't send them to art school. Lana, 16, look, we go back and forth about this. And I'll say it again. I said, Lana, it's not that I don't want you to go to college. I said, I would suggest, because she's an artist already, way talented. I said, I would suggest your college experience is different. And that is, is go to many colleges and enroll in the colleges based on the class, based on the teacher, based on the skills that you want to have and worry less about the degree and more about your portfolio and more about your ability as you stand up for yourself and assert your vision as well as be able to listen to someone else's vision and adapt into that should duty call. That to me is a great way to use college. But this formula, that's just like, Oh, I'll take that to the bank. I'm going to teach you how to change a tire. And Oh, did you know cars don't have tires anymore? But I'm going to teach you how to change a tire. And you're going to pay me the same to learn how to change a tire as I would teach you how to paint. And I'm like, well, which is more relevant for me? I don't want to not know how to change a tire, but I'll Google it. And this the thing is, is now these kids can do that. We didn't have access to learning techniques. Remember I said that Photoshop came in to art school when I was there and nobody knew what to do with Photoshop. First thing we did is we made fake bu bus passes. <laughs> what do they call that when you when you when you make a fake money? Yeah, counterfeit. So we yeah, I would wrap up with saying that the experiences that I had as an artist and, a, and an entrepreneur were just getting started and I think the prices that I paid was for a lack of understanding of how to be consistent in what I was making, how to market what I was making, and it was pure optimism and fire that kept me going to the next day and the fact that I, I actually really loved what I was doing. I'll hear entrepreneurs say about that, screw what you love, don't do that. And I'm like, well, there's somewhere in between that it's okay to do something that you really enjoy. I just didn't know how to make it pay the bills fast enough. I did not have the guidance. Either I wasn't listening to guidance that was being given to me or I, I, just, I just didn't have access to it. You had the persistence to go and read books in the libraries, right? I remember I did that too. Who does that nowadays? No. Even I don't go to the library anymore. I don't even read as much. You know, my vision is, is different and it's kind of like, where, 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 where am I? But the younger kids have different challenges. I think their challenge is attention, focus. They've been trained out of that in some ways. It's been tolerable. I see the problem young kids will face, young entrepreneurs will face, since they do have now the access to all the possible information in it that past. When they will not get the results, that fast, how they are used to getting the results that fast, access to anything fast, when they will not get it I in know. life, in business, in struggle, in, Some in, will. in ups and downs. Some will get it for sure. And the thing is, is those who get it will be on the internet saying, I got it, I got it. And then everyone else, <laughs> then everyone else has the expectation of like, well, what is it? My, the soil in my garden's not good enough? Your watermelon got bigger than, you know? Yeah, the, the expectation increases as well. It's the same thing when I see some younger people buying first-time houses. It's their first-time house. It's measured against their parents' last house. Their parents didn't start there. So, yeah, there's some discrepancies there. But I can sound like an old guy talking really fast when I, when I think about the things that I, were a swing and a miss. But I don't want that to discourage other artists. But I don't want them to think that any one organization, university, or art studio or art mentor is going to make them be successful. you, you really got to do the work. I mean, that's part of it. Some people will do the work smarter. I was kind of half smart at the work I was doing. But yeah, do the work. And the work isn't clicking. I don't even text with two thumbs. So it's do the work. The word of advice. For which part? Because that was a short, long story. So this is why I'm asking after almost any of your story, give an advice. Give an advice to a person like me. 
I think would help if I if I X-ray myself right away at this moment. And even though I said I love what I what I was doing and I put in a lot of hours, I was doing what I was doing because I was equally scared that I couldn't do anything else. My option was only move forward. I could not be an employee. I could not be a soldier. I didn't follow directions well. Clearly, as much as there was passion, there was fear. And I think that that fear I lingered in unsuccess for a long time. I had a wealthy family to the point of I would define wealth as they weren't worried about the lights, they owned a house, things like this. It was not race cars and things, but I thought there was wealth. That presented a luxury to me that I could make decisions that were very slow to bear fruit because I knew, although my family wasn't giving me money, I knew that I would not end up bleeding on the street, that if something came up, I could if my car absolutely shitted out, I could probably call and did on occasions need that kind of help. It delayed me as well because I could do with so little that I didn't know how to reach for more. I didn't know how to be an employee at the same time at a good job and seed my entrepreneurial things. That's If you can find the balance of that, that would be great. Here's the wisdom of the story here. If you want to do something, go to work for someone who's already doing it. Don't do it the same as them. You'll find a way to do it different. The other is if you have the ability to have a nice job that allows some of the stability that prevents the imbalance, take that job and sleep a little bit less and then take that extra 20 hours a week and work on your entrepreneurialness. The imbalances in my life came from the double lack of stability. I became emotionally stunted, socially stunted, relationship-wise stunted because I missed those years of participating in that because I was trying to constantly give CPR to a business that I, I didn't know how to resuscitate. I didn't even know that there was enough blood. <laughs> there was not customers for what I was doing. In the culinary, there were not these products that existed. So it was, I don't know why I thought it would be fast. From from Kitty Bunker to your words of advice, let's let's take that, that, that period in time of yours. As an entrepreneur, I think there's going to be beautiful moments and moments that are beautiful that, that don't look beautiful. It's, of course, it's that retrospective thing. But what I would say is it's not new advice. Enjoy what you're doing or find some aspect of what you're doing to enjoy and share that with someone else. Don't do it alone.